morning. We welcome all in attendance in the cathedral and everyone who is watching the live stream of this Mass. Today we celebrate the third Sunday of Easter. Our celebrant for today's liturgy is Father Christie. At this Mass we especially remember Marlene Yaros. Please remember in prayer those who are sick, Luis Gambato, Mary Lynch, and Allison Henry, and those who have died Isabel Giordano, Ann T. Brannigan, Dorothy D'Amato, and Liza Mendoza. If you have not already done so, please pass out the music supplement at the end of each pew. Our entrance hymn is on the first page of our music supplement. It's on the second page. of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Spirit 
be with you all. Friends, as we enter into this Holy Mass today on the third Sunday of Easter, we're still basking in the great truth and the joy that Christ has risen from the dead. And he continues to pour onto the earth his graces and his mercies uh, for us. Let us acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to enter into this Holy Eucharist. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart, Lord have mercy. You came to call the sinner, Christ have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting light. Let us pray. May your people exalt forever, O God, in renewed youthfulness of spirit, so that rejoicing now in the restored glory of our adoption, we may look forward in confident hope to the rejoicing of the day of resurrection. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of the Apostles. Peter said to the people, the God of Abraham, the God of Isaac, the God of Jacob, the God of our fathers has glorified his servant Jesus, whom you handed over and denied in Pilate's presence when he had decided to release him. You denied the Holy and Righteous One and asked that a murderer be released to you. The author of life you put to death but God raised him from the dead. Of this we are witnesses. Now I know, brothers, that you acted out of ignorance, just as your leaders did. But God has thus brought to fulfillment what he had announced beforehand through the mouth of all the prophets, that his Christ would suffer. Repent, therefore, and be converted, that your sins may be wiped away. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
reading from the first letter of St. John. My children, I am writing this to you so that you may not commit sin. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ, the Righteous One. He is expiation for our sins, and not for our sins only, but for those of the whole world. The way we may be sure that we know Him is to keep His commandments. Those who say, I know Him, but do not keep his commandments are liars, and the truth is not in them. But, for, but whoever keeps his word, the love of God is truly perfected in him. The word of the Lord. be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. The two disciples recounted what had taken place on the way and how Jesus was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. While they were still speaking about this, he stood in their midst and said to them, Peace be with you. But they were startled and terrified and thought that they were seeing a ghost. Then he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do questions arise in your hearts? Look at my hands and my feet, that it is I myself. Touch me and see, because a ghost does not have flesh and bones, as you can see I have. And as he said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. While they were still incredulous for joy and were amazed, he asked them, have you anything here to eat? They gave him a piece of baked fish. He took it and ate it in front of them. He said to them, these are my words that I spoke to you while I was still with you, that everything written about me in the law of Moses and in the prophets and psalms must be fulfilled. Then he opened their minds to understand the scriptures. And he said to them, Thus it is written that the Christ would suffer and rise from the dead on the third day, and that repentance for the forgiveness of sins would be preached in his name to all the nations beginning from Jerusalem. You are witnesses of these things. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. 
One of the great gifts that we have during the Easter season is to read the Acts of the Apostles in almost its entirety. On the Sunday readings, there's always a selection uh, from the account of the early church. And daily Mass, we hear even more of it. And we always return to the Acts of the Apostles in the Easter season because it's our story. When Jesus died and rose, it wasn't the end, but rather he inaugurated the church and his mission continues in us. There's a, uh, there's a, a great uh, um, institute uh, about evangelizing the church. Uh, it's called Acts 29. Maybe you know that there is no Acts 29. It ends at 28. So what is Acts 29? Well, that's us. Everything that Jesus did in the flesh when he was with us is continuing to happen here and now. And that's why we celebrate the sacraments, because it's the Lord himself who continues to touch the world uh, through the mystery of the church. And each one of us, we become real ambassadors for that message. There's gonna be places where you go and people that you meet who will have very little contact with the risen Christ. So this community, you're coming here to pray and to be nourished, to be strengthened. This is how, practically speaking, we are nourished to continue his mission. Uh, especially in the Easter season, where it happens all year long, but especially in the Easter season. This weekend, I uh, have the privilege to, uh, to be able to appeal on behalf of Bishop Cecchio. Uh, every year you know that he conducts an annual appeal, which is that, um, that part of the church's life where we recognize that we can't do it by ourselves, that the needs of the church are great. And, um, you know, our Diocese of Metuchen is four counties, uh, Middlesex, uh, Somerset, Hunterdon, and Warren. I used to call it um, the central, uh, the central um, uh, counties of New Jersey, and I was corrected because people in Warren County do not think that they are in central New Jersey. But such as it is, you know, we, we are, we're a family all across the, these, four, these four counties. And in a certain sense, we then are commissioned by God to work together as a family, accomplishing things that we couldn't do by ourselves. So our 90 parishes under the guidance of Bishop Cecchio is what helps our church uh, to be apostolic, uh, to be missionary, uh, to be charitable, uh, to be the presence of the Lord. So this weekend, we will hear his own message to us about our participation uh, in the Bishop's Appeal. Maybe you've already made a commitment, and so I'm so grateful that you have. Thank you for that. Maybe you're still considering it, or maybe haven't thought about it. So I ask you please to be prayerful and open to that. And do pray for Bishop Cecchio and for the work of the church. It's a big, important job that's very complicated, needs our prayers, and it needs each one of us to be participants in the life of the church, because the risen Christ depends on us to make him known. So I ask now that we be able to uh, listen uh, to Bishop's message and then be able to respond to it. Thank you for taking a few moments today to listen to this video about the road to Emmaus and about our Bishop's annual appeal. Jesus had just died, just been crucified. They lost their hope, they were disappointed, and they were heading away from the other disciples, going to Emmaus. Along the way, they encounter this man who starts speaking to them, asking what's taking place. So they couldn't believe he didn't know. And he listened patiently to them, and then he started to explain why the things that happened did, why the Messiah had to suffer and die. And as they were walking with him and listening to his compassionate voice, they begged him to stay. 
And he did. He stayed with them at Emmaus. So after he had explained the scriptures and why the Messiah had to die, he sat down with them at table. And in the breaking of the bread, it dawned on them. This was Jesus. This was the risen Lord. And then he went away. The disciples, though, recognizing Jesus and nourished by him in the Eucharist, run back to Jerusalem to the other disciples to share the good news. This Emmaus story is our story. We too, at times in our life, can get frustrated and we too can get confused and lose faith. Imagine if when Jesus arrived, started walking with those two apostles, if he started correcting them. What are you doing? You're doing the wrong thing. But he didn't, he was compassionate and he listened to them first, led them on the right path. That's what we're asked to do too as Jesus' disciples today, 2,000 years later. We're asked to accompany those in need. And that's what the Bishop's Appeal does. It accompanies so many in need. There's so many ministries, as you know, that are assisted by the Bishop's Appeal. Maybe first and foremost, we think about all those helped by Catholic charities, all those who are suffering and in need. You know, we have so many people who come to us for help, and it's only grown in recent years. So the need is enormous. So I ask you to be generous in helping us to respond to these people that come for help. These are things that we can't do alone, huh? In our own parishes, but things that we need to group together and do as a Dawson church, as a local church. Our pastoral initiatives, helping especially our children and youth and young adults, and so many different ministries and catechesis, accompanying our college students at the Catholic Student Center at St. Peter's University Parish, working with our youth at our high schools. I think of the many people who need our help, those who are in prison and need the assistance, the nourishment and encouragement to help get on the right path from our priests who visit our prisons and our other ministers that accompany them. The people in our hospitals, obviously, huh? Our chaplains at our hospitals and the teams, the legion of people who help them. They all need our support. They need our support at this moment in their need as they're sick and facing these great challenges in their lives. Our seminarians, of course, you know it's so dear to my heart. We're blessed with 21 seminarians, which is so wonderful, uh, but it's also expensive, huh? You know what college education costs. We also have to make sure they have health insurance and can get around. So your help's very much needed in supporting our 21 shepherds so that we have priests who can continue to make Jesus present to us through the breaking opening of scripture at mass, through the sharing of the Eucharist at Sunday mass and daily mass for those who are able to attend that. It's so important that we have enough shepherds for our parishes. So I thank you for your support of our seminarians and for praying for more vocations to the priesthood and consecrated life in our diocese. You know, too, the work of evangelization is so important in our day and our social communications are so important in helping to meet people where they are today. That's all sponsored by the diocese, too. These are things that we can't do alone, but things that we need to group together and do as a local church. Our pastoral initiatives, our Office of Human Life and Dignity is supported by the Appeal, too, and you know how important that work is in these days, huh? Supporting life in all of its stages from conception to natural death. Uh, the, the life is under attack in so many ways, fortunately, in our state, in our country. The work of the diocese helps all of us together to be able to work for, to respect and build up a culture of life uh, that respects everyone, the unborn, those who are dying and ill, and all those stages in between where people need our help in so many ways. The needs are many, but I know I can count on you. I always have been able to, and so I thank you. I ask you to reach deeper if you're able this year to help. Let's be nourished by our Lord to the scriptures and the Eucharist, asking him to stay with us. Stay with us and help us when we have doubts or when we need that extra help in our faith, but also renewed in mission that we go out to reach out to those who need Jesus. Another thing we've done this year is we've set up a separate foundation for the Bishop's Appeal, which means these funds are sequestered in a separate trust. And there's some priests and lay people on the board, and every dollar is used to support the ministries in the Bishop's Appeal. Nothing else. Even the administrative cost of the Bishop's Appeal is paid for in a different way. And the money that's donated goes all to outreach to those in need. So God bless you, you know, my love and prayers and gratitude for you. And uh, I'm, I'm counting on you as I do always, huh, to join in this effort. If everyone gave something, it goes such a long way and helps build us up. If every household can make a gift, whatever you're able, to support this great work, uh, I'd be so grateful and I know our Lord would too as we strive to build his kingdom here in our, our beautiful four counties of this diocese of the touch and that I know I'm blessed to be a part of. We ask the Lord to bless you and your loved ones and all those who come to us in need. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
So um, if you have not yet been able to do so and would be willing to do it today, at the end of each of the pews, there are cards that um, will give a few moments for you to be able to fill it out to make a commitment uh, to the Bishop's Appeal. And there's these little yellow pencils uh, that sh are there as well that you could uh, fill that in. Um, every, every gift is important, no matter how no matter how small or you think insignificant at all, counts and makes it possible for us to do these uh, important things in the church that we as one parish wouldn't be able to do. Uh, and I know that Bishop really, um, he really appreciates uh, our prayers. He's always praying for us. Uh, he has a little chapel in his house that he begins his day with prayer. And he prays for the diocese and he prays for the people's needs. So let's uh, pray for him too. So uh, as we give you a few moments just to fill this out, and then you can, you can put it into the uh, collection basket. Um, and we'll be sure to make sure that this gets um, taken to the diocesan offices and so it can be recorded. And thanks again so much for your goodwill, uh, for your patience and for your prayers for the Bishop's Annual Appeal. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate to the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. As we continue to celebrate the resurrection, we are confident that Christ intercedes for us at the right hand of the Father. With faith in his love, we make our prayers in his name. For our holy shepherds, that they may always have the courage to confront sin in God's people, as Peter did, and call them to repentance with compassion and understanding. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That Jesus may open the hearts of the world leaders to keep his commandments, leading us into the paths of peace. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer for our diocesan church, that our people will show their support for its services, programs, and ministries by participating in the Bishop's Annual Appeal. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who are in pain of body or soul, especially our loved ones, and those who have asked our prayers, that God may relieve their distress and put gladness into their hearts again. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our faithful departed loved ones, and especially for Marlene Yaros, that Jesus may stand before them with his radiant greeting of peace and welcome them to the dwelling he has prepared them for them in heaven. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. 
for all of the petitions that we hold in the silence of our hearts. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-loving God, you raise Jesus from death to life. Open our ears that we may know your will and our hearts that we may do your will. We ask this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Our tithing offering will be taken at this time. Thank you for your continued support and generosity. Our offertory hymn is number 526, Be Joyful Mary, number 526. Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at my hands for the praise and the glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. Receive, O Lord, we pray, these offerings of your exultant church, and as you have given her cause for such great gladness, Grant also that the gifts we bring may bear fruit in perpetual happiness through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your heart. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, 
but in this time above all to laud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. He never ceases to offer himself for us, but defends us and ever pleads our cause before you. He is the sacrificial victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise, and even the heavenly powers with the angelic host sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it. For this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and James, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, 
with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty, Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Offer to each other a sign of Christ's peace. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed.
number 538 on the journey to Emmaus number 538 Having received our Lord in Holy Communion, let us take a moment to welcome him more deeply as we pray together. Soul of Christ, sanctify me. Body of Christ, save me. Blood of Christ, inebriate me. Water from the side of Christ, wash me. Passion of Christ, strengthen me. 
O good Jesus, hear me. Within your wounds conceal me. Do not permit me to be parted from you. From the evil foe, protect me. At the hour of my death, call me, and bid me come to you, to praise you with all your saints, forever and ever. Amen. O sacred banquet, in which Christ is received, the memory of his passion is renewed, the mind is filled with grace, and a pledge of future glory is given to us. Let us pray. Look with kindness upon your people, O Lord, and grant, we pray, that, that those you were pleased to renew by eternal mysteries may attain in their flesh the incorruptible glory of the resurrection. Through Christ our Lord. Just like to um, remind you and invite you that um, next Saturday, Bishop is going to uh, host a mass here at 10 o'clock on Saturday morning. It's being sponsored by the Office of Multicultural Ministry in the diocese. So it'll be a way to bring together all the various different uh, ethnic apostolates throughout the diocese. Uh, be a very colorful and beautiful celebration uh, for Mass. And then downstairs uh, in our community room, there'll be a, a bit of a, uh, a fair or festival of all the different, the different foods and, and some of the traditions. So I encourage you um, to come if, you're, if you can. I think it'll be a very uplifting and beautiful um, celebration. Um, also, um, want to remind you and invite the women of our parish uh, to come to our first annual inspirational brunch. It's a little bit misnamed because the brunch is in the afternoon. I think brunches are supposed to be in the morning. But nonetheless, it, it's going to be a wonderful event. We're welcoming Leah Darrow, who's a national uh, speaker. and. Um, it's, uh, it's, it's really for, for, for women of all ages, uh, but uh, there's a special emphasis in seeking to try to get young women to come as well. So sixth grade on up are welcome to come with their mothers and their grandmothers. So um, please see more information in the bulletin or else on our website online. And once again, thank you for your patience uh, with our process of doing the in-pew solicitation for the annual appeal that we do every year. It's a, it's a way that we can, um, well, we can become part of the bigger church, and so I, I really thank you for that. And please keep Bishop Cecchio and the mission of the church uh, in your prayers. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Our recessional hymn is number 539, Sing with all the saints in glory, verses 1 and 4, number 539. 